Hello again, Steve here, and I try to touch on the lighter side of life again tonight, or for a change. Sometimes it's a little bit heavy, right? But I'm going to, it just came to me, <clears throat> the idea of visiting. I was just, and the reason this came to me is I was just at a Toastmasters meeting, as I mentioned before, it's one of my favorite hobbies. And it's a bit of a tradition, but it's not actually kept very well, but you know, once in a while a few people from one club will go and visit another club or one, you know, or just one individual or group. But this evening we had our annual wrap-up sort of potluck event and there were three people showed up from another club and it really, really added to the to the flavor of it. Um, there's something about you know, people of, people of like mind dropping by when the whole point is to basically have some kind of a visit. You know, like a, especially a <clears throat> Toastmasters wind-up meeting where we all bring some food and sit around and chat and stuff like that. To have people show up, extra people show up from other clubs who want <clears throat> to help out and be be neighborly and so on. It's just, it's just so wonderful. And it reminds me of, <clears throat> you know, sort of the good old days, if I shall say, <clears throat> you know, there's all kinds of, <clears throat> we always, human beings, sorry, <clears throat> we have this tendency to want to look at the other side of the fence, right? Whether, you know, the future is brighter or the past was glorious or whatever. And there's, there's always some element to that because we pick out what we like, right? But I mean, one of the things that I kind of miss about the past is the, the simpler way of just kind of popping by, you know, saying hello. It's almost like the neighbors were part of the family. You know, we don't have to make a phone call to come home. We can just come home from work and say hello. Well, in the good old days when I grew up too in the rural area, it was, you know, the neighbors could just pop by if it was supper time or whatever after supper. It didn't matter. We were at home and they were just treated as family, you know. And it's still like that in some places. In fact, where I used to live, out in, the, out in the boonies here, there was uh, an older couple next door. Next door, of course, is, you know, two miles down the road, but uh, to this day I keep in contact with, with him. He's, uh, you know, one of the old school type of people, and if I go over there to say hello or to pick something up or ask him if I can borrow a tool or whatever, it's it's never, you know, see you later. You know, I stand around and talk for a while and talk about the old times and how the dog is doing and, you know, that the cat ran into a skunk or something like that. It's just, it's it's human heart-to-heart -heart stuff. And it's, it's, it's real. It's not Facebook. It's not email. It's, it's real time. And, you know, while you're standing there, the dog is smelling somebody's ass or whatever. It's, it's the real thing. It's, it's kind of like a, a brotherly thing, not the dog thing, but you know, I just use that as a, as a, a word picture for the reality of it, you know. And um, I think it adds to quality of life if we can have some of that. And you know, throughout all of this, if I can sort of put an idea forward, you know, improving the quality of our life experience, and I think human contact, the more real it is, the more genuine it is. Uh, the better it is, the more complete it is. And the secondary kind of thrust, or maybe it's primary, is trying to get to the idea that we see each other as brothers and sisters in humanity. Because um, I think the world would be better off for it. We've been at each other's throats. Um, in a general sense, humanity has been anyways for enough years already. And the more we can take time out once in a while and visit people, not so much necessarily to, or, you know, especially not to just go by and try to sell them something or whatever, but just to take the time and go by and visit and say hello. And, you know, it's amazing to me how people can live next door to each other in a city for, for years and not really know each other, not go to each other's suppers once in a while or, you know, each other's barbecues or this sort of thing. I mean, it happens. 
and it's happening in certain and on streets and neighborhoods where that does happen um, I would say the quality of life is better from the people I've talked to anyway when there's great neighbors that you can sort of um, rely on and count as almost part of your extended family yeah it's it's pretty amazing I remember actually when my I remember one of my brothers passed away a few years back and he lived in a community which was very much old time small town and everybody knew each other and so on and they they were you know we'd go to his place and the door was always open they never locked the door never locked the car never took the keys out of the car his philosophy was well if you took the key out of the car and the neighbor needed the car they wouldn't be able to use the car you know that was kind of the the attitude and the house was always open i mean if you you know because you know if somebody wanted to if somebody was hungry they'd need you know and so on and you know when he got ill with cancer um I don't think his wife ever cooked anything. It was just constant. Every night somebody would bring something by from the community. It was really amazing. And we ended up in the hospital near the end when he was, you know, a while before he was to pass away. He was in such dire situ uh, condition. And the doctors were trying to tell him, look, you know what, family only, that's it. And his response was, and these people who are coming, like a stream of them, they are my family. And they looked after me for two years when I couldn't, you know, my wife was overwhelmed and I was in and out of the hospital and so on and they took the kids in and they cleaned up the yard and all that sort of thing and they're my neighbors, they're all, they're their community, that's my family. So he, I think I was a great example and I remember the, the doctor or somebody that mentioned that later that he just, just never heard anybody say that before. But, because that's the rule he came up with was family only. And the doctor was trying to put this on him, right? And his response was, well, they are my family. So, um, brothers and sisters, eh? You know, I think that's important to, uh, to remember. Might sound a little bit serious, but it's, uh, you know, something in here I think that um, we're, we're best to get, you know. Um, a quality of life is there. We can feel vulnerable. A lot of times it's easier to hide. But easy doesn't really mean quality in the end. Short-term quality. It's like short-term avoidance, right? Of, oh, it's a nuisance, you know, let people in, blah, blah, blah. But the quality of that connection, that human connection, just feeds on itself in a way. And all of a sudden, we're... We realize we're, we're part of a, of a bigger thing than just our own little ego world, right? Or even our own little ego family world. So, just some thoughts on visiting. You know, I always tell myself I should do more of it, or could do more of it, and uh, the example tonight is a good one to help me put that idea forward. Once again, great chatting. Chat again soon. Bye-bye.